We are live. What is up, guys? Mountaineer Paul here. Coos had business to attend to, so I'm going to pick up some slack and uh, talk about what's you know been the end of a really difficult season, to say the very least. Um, an inexplicable outcome to the end of a season that I, I've ever seen. A 16-point lead gone, three technicals. Uh, you can certainly make the case that at least one of those should have been a double T. Um, just so much bullshit. But at the end of the day, we will be okay. We are Mountaineer fans, and things are not always pretty for us. We always look forward to a brighter tomorrow, and that brighter tomorrow is hopefully coming. Uh, we look forward to the next leader of the men's basketball program as we say goodbye and thank you to Josh Howard for being a stand-up guy, uh, doing an incredible job from, from what you would consider a leader's perspective. But unfortunately, on the court, he may be better suited as an assistant. That time will tell. But certainly this season made that look to be so. And some of the calls in this game certainly lend and lead that direction. Kudos to a team that lost by 36 the other day to come in and really, really play well tonight. Um, I like what BPA 1985 just said. The night is just darkest before the dawn. Of course it is. By the way, using this microphone, guys, um, got rid of the old headphone of Rudy. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Am I too loud? Do I need to adjust the mic anyway, any way, shape, or form? Uh, John Kelly, Reva Atkins, BPA 1985, John Christopich, Matthew Watkins, John Kelly, Curtis D316, D316 Markets and Moto, Sasquatch, my dude, what's up? All in here for this episode. Good. Glad it's here. It sounded clear. I, I uh, invested in a cheaper microphone, what I could afford, and seems to be like um, things sound better. I did a video earlier on the NIL roundtable, really dug deep into that one uh, about the Nick Saban stuff um, with Ted Cruz and where that might be taking us next as far as revenue sharing goes. So if you guys want to check that out, um, that was a pretty fun episode to, to do. It's not in my norm. Normally I'm breaking down players, talking about technique. You guys know that. Or talking to players or breaking news. Uh, but this time I went ahead and just kind of reacted to what I saw. Get to some comments here. I see you there, Mo Carpenter. What's up, my dude? Uh, David Cummings, thank you. Yep, three coaches. That's right. Yep, that's right. Three coaches. And, you know, we all know Josh came into tough circumstances. Nobody denies that. But that I have personally seen, there are absolutely things he could have done better, uh, as anybody. But he, he really made some first-year rookie mistakes in a year. He, he really had to kind of do what Neil Brown did last year uh, and get in the foxhole with himself and trust himself. And unfortunately, he didn't have anything to go off of. Neil Brown had – four or five years worth of failure to go off of. Uh, and that's why that nine season, nine win season kind of arose partially. Um, unfortunately for Josh Eiler, you know, what worked for Hugs definitely wasn't going to work for him. And he even said he was going away from a lot of what Hugs did. And he did. Um, and we just didn't have the horses at the end of the day. Like I say all the time, Jimmy's and Joe's beat X's and O's every day of the week. Mark Painter, thank you for the $5 super chat. Brother, at least the worst coach. Oh, I must be well. Brother, at least the worst coach. Well, he's gone. If you said something different, let me know there, Mark. Thank you for the $5 super chat. We, Me and Coos really appreciate that. Everybody give Coos hell the comments uh, for not being here today. Haven't been able to say that in a while. Uh, but anytime Coos is in a part of the show, I always tell everybody, give them hell down to the comments uh, for just leaving me hanging out to dry after the last game of the year. What kind of guy is Coos for that? Uh, I'm not as fancy as Coos, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to bring up the box score here <laughs> uh, on my phone and just kind of read it to you guys. Uh, so getting into some player stats on the West Virginia side of things, Kerr Creesa, 13 points, one Breen Brown, six assists, which is right around his average. Uh, KJ, Kobe had uh, eight points, which is a really pretty good game for him. Quinn Slezinski had a nice game, seven rebounds, 15 boards, four assists. Uh, Raekwon had right around his average of 14 points. Uh, you know, that he's not going to throw many assists or rebounds in there. It's all about scoring for him. Jesse considered, continued his pretty good run towards the end of the year. Um, and really, that's kind of where it begins and ends. Uh, at the end of the day, Lukosius for Cincinnati could miss. Uh, and he was the reason they won that game there at the end. The dagger three with WVU down two was a big deal. But let's talk a little bit about how the 16-point lead was lost. It had a lot to do with Cincinnati and what they did. No doubt about that. But um, in my opinion, it was more – I just think – I don't know. It, to me, it looked like West Virginia at the end of the day, whenever it comes down to it, this team just wasn't that good under pressure. They weren't good under scrutiny. And they just didn't have the team chemistry slash horses to run with a team like Cincinnati, who was really on that bubble, on that verge, you know. And there's a lot – psychologically, there's a lot to be said for having 18, 19 wins – and, and and knowing that you're on the tournament bubble uh, and all you have to do is just win one, maybe two games and you're in, you win 19, 20 games in the Big 12, you're in. As, and then you look at the other side of it for West Virginia, you got to run the whole thing. And, and you played Houston, you know what that's like. You know that's not going to happen. Uh, you did beat Kansas. So, you know, best case scenario, this team was going to win. This game would beat Kansas, I think. I think that would have been our top best-case scenario. But then what are you doing? You hold up the coaching search. I don't know. I, You know, that sounds horrible to say, guys. Am I right in saying that? Is it weird to say that? Like, of course, as a fan, we want to win every game, right? But at the same time, there's this coaching search that's looming in the background. Let me know how you guys feel about that in the comments. Would you have rather won out the tournament or won some games in the tournament but not went out uh, and, and and then possibly lose your coach, the guy you want? Who's probably coaching the tournament anyways? I get that. But uh, it could happen, you know, and that's kind of what I was worried about. What's up, Ronald Wells? He said, first time on the podcast, Mount near Paul's the bomb. would like to give a donation of $20. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, appreciate that, man. Uh, if you want to do that, there is a a dollar sign you can click on. Maybe some of you guys in the comments can direct him to a spot down there where you can, uh, you know, I, there's, I know there's a dollar sign you can click on. Uh, and, and certainly, Ronald, if you have anything you want to promote or anything you want to say, uh, you can say that with the donation. I, I appreciate that, man. That means a ton. What's up, Mark Flugrath? Haven't seen you around in a couple days. Team had no discipline, three technical fouls, gave Cincinnati for three free timeouts and changed the momentum. That's pretty much what it is. I have a better chance of becoming the next head coach than Bob Huggins does. That kind of gives me some hope in my life. <laughs> Scott Fisher said he's ready to move on. I feel that, my dude. I feel that. There he is. Mark Flugrath, man. Appreciate that, man. That's, to be honest, that, that means a lot. You know, it really, truly does. Uh, you guys are, are super, super, super people, man. And uh, I appreciate it. Sasquatch coming through as well. Don't forget to like, sub, and shop Dutch Miller Automotive, which is, you know what? Subtly, he reminds me a lot. I need to, to shout out the sponsor, don't I? Uh, let me get that pulled up. 
also, I, I was told I needed to add, I don't know if I have it on here or not. I think I, I we add, we got a new picture here for the Dutch Miller thing. I'm going to scroll through just quickly here and see if I can uh, add it to here. I don't think, there it is. All right, here we go. Thank you guys for the donations, man. It means a, a ton, seriously. As soon as this thing uploads, I'll uh, do the Dutch Miller deal. There it is. And there he is. The man, the myth, and the legend, Chris Miller. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in today to the home of friends and family pricing. Only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. That's correct. He is running for governor of West Virginia. Uh, we try not to get political on here, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, he is our sponsor. And all I can say about Chris is every promise, everything we've ever asked for uh, in negotiation, anything you want to bring up, he has delivered on it and delivered on it in spades, guys. Uh, he's been great to us. He really has. So, uh, you know, at the very least, shop at Dutch Miller Automotive. All right, guys. So, John Kelly says, I will be glad to see the day we create turnovers and lock down on defense. Let me tell you, man. Uh, I am 1,000% ready for those days to come back. And that's why a lot of people think Dustin Kearns may be the guy because he preaches that kind of stuff. You know, interesting. I want to watch for, you know, a name that I haven't seen a lot of, and maybe it's because of the age. Would you guys like a Frank Martin over some of these guys that are being mentioned? Maybe some of these mid-major guys. A Frank Martin who's had a lot of success in college basketball, but he's connected to hugs probably way too much. It's never going to happen. That's for sure. We know that. Ronald Wells, man. Look at you guys shooting through today. You guys are killing it, man. Seriously, Ronald, if you have anything you want to say, I don't see a comment attached to this. Do not hesitate, and I will put it out there. But this means a lot. <laughs> it almost looks like a celebration, like we won something, but we didn't. We lost. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing for sure is, um, this is this definitely helps. No doubt about that. So... Dusty May, please. Absolutely. Daniel Sargent says Chris Jans at Mississippi State. I saw that name come up today in a in an article on ESPN. No doubt about that. He is most definitely a name. And, and you know, I mean, what he's done at Mississippi State is certainly commendable. No doubt about that. Not saying it isn't. I just – don't know if he's ready for – I mean, what he's done at Mississippi State's been great. But at the end of the day – and listen, how Jimmy Bell played this year was pretty good. You know, like he, he looked a lot better at Mississippi State than he did at West Virginia. But could that be the talent drop-off? You tell me. Uh, I, I think for basically at the end of the day, the way I look at things is – Jans would be a good hire if a bunch really fall off. And 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 it could get to that point, no doubt. But I, I just hope it doesn't. <laughs> and then we get one of the guys that we're looking for. So whether that be uh, DeVries, I, I don't know. Let me know who you guys think in the comments you would like to have um, the most. I mean, whoever that may be. If that's Dusty May, let it be Dusty May. If that's 
there's several names absolutely you could bring up. Um, the, personally, for me, I was the Will Wade wagon kind of sailed. I kind of got upset. I wish we'd at least look at him. Uh, Daniel Sargent says Chris Beard from Ole Miss absolutely be a great hire, but um, you know, I, I assume everybody's making the call to him. Ohio State, Washington, you, you got to make the call. Um, I mean, and and, and uh, if he would come, yeah, he would be a top two, three choice, no doubt, for me. And by top two, three, I mean that's including like Joe Mazzula, Jay Wright, you know, guys that you got to call that most likely aren't coming, <laughs> but you got to make the call, right? So, yeah, I know, Drum Wolf. It was. Listen, man, it just hasn't been our year, and I, I wish I could say differently, but it, it just seems like everything worked against us this year. And and Josh Eiler mentioned earlier in the year about whistles working against teams that um, have losing records and, and favoring teams that have the winning record in a game. And I just wonder if that didn't maybe come into play here, because that's what it looked like, right? To me. So I'd be curious to know how y'all felt about that too. Ronald Wells said, Heck yeah, old Frank Martin, old school coach, my kind of man. Yeah, I mean, listen, he'd be better than some of the alternatives here. Now I don't know how he's because he's a, at UMass, um oh, I would say NIL probably isn't a huge part of what they do there. So um but I'd be curious to know how, how much, you know, he was at South Carolina, but that was like right before NIL really popped off. So I don't know. Speaking of South Carolina, Lamont, Lamont Paris is being mentioned a lot for possibly the Ohio State job. I would love to see him being mentioned for our job, but there has been no, at least publicly, um, I have seen nothing with his name on it. Chiefs fan says, please say no to the James Madison coach, Mark Byington. And I would like to know why you say that. Um, listen, he's down on my list as far as I, I think, you know, you look at him. I I'm, I'm just realized my light's been off the whole time. I apologize, guys. I mean, I guess you can see me, but kind of gives that extra, extra little bit. Um. Byington, you know, one thing I like about Byington is he had, at different points this year, five transfers that started or played a lot of minutes. Uh, and he did that at, at JMU. And just what could he do at West Virginia? It could go both ways. Um, but but at the end of the day, playing with transfers in this day and age is a big deal. And any coach that can succeed with transfers is somebody that I'm interested in. but being that he just won his league for the first time, maybe he's just now peaking. They won the league this year. Uh, now, the Sun Belt is not. It's just not the Missouri Valley. The Missouri Valley much tougher than what DeVries has to do there at Drake. But at the end of the day, you still – let's see what, what he does in the tournament. If Byington goes on a Final Four run, then we'll be lucky to get him. So – you know, because everybody else will want him. So we'll just, it's just all about timing and, and who's hot. And I don't want to say no one Byington. He's definitely not at the top of my list. But at the end of the day, he he's somebody that you have to look at it and say objectively, first of all, where he's coached at matters of this. But objectively, for 12 years, you didn't win your league. You didn't win a conference title. But one of those things changes now, and then he's about to go to the tournament. So he's changing that fate as we speak at the right time for him. And he's hot at the right minute, and maybe that'll matter for Ren Baker. <laughs> maybe not top of your list, but Frank Martin fast, yeah. Tino's still happy and unhappy at St. John's, yeah. Listen, I'm not a big culture fit guy, but – Patino would be like the furthest thing from our culture, unless you want to talk about like maybe we can bring back Truck Bryant and those guys from New York 
area. <laughs> they, they would fit in with PT, though. Deshaun Butler, uh, guys like that. Yeah, I know. They teed him, I know. They teed him up over me. Look, I get it, man. So the way it works in the offseason, Ronald, is so obviously the basketball, this this is I have two. Um and, and then there's a third one called Kuz's Corner that you should really check out as well, which is my partner that's normally on this show. Um, but this is called Who's from the Hills, a basketball show. Um, we do that when news comes available. Uh, you know, it's been on, on this one since the last game was today, and there's going to be a lot of speculation about coaching. I would check back every day on this channel. I would be surprised if we weren't posting something every other day, if not every day, on this channel due to the coaching search. Uh, spec there's going to be a lot of speculation, but we'll try to sift through that. I have a football channel called Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. Um, like I said, I just did some stuff on that today. If you want to go talk and see what, you know, the collectives may be out, revenue sharing may be in, uh, that was a discussion on Capitol Hill today. I would highly suggest you go there and check that out as well. I, dig, I dug pretty deep in that. This is what I do for a living. So I do get to dig deep on this stuff and then kind of put my time and effort into it as to where other people kind of have a side job or something like that going on. That doesn't make them any less, but I just have time. There's nobody on the list, on anybody's list that excites me. I'm really hoping Ren has an ace up in sleep, up in sleep. So what do you mean by that, Cole D? Are you saying that not even a guy like DeVries or a guy like uh, Dusty May, that either one of those guys excites you? Trying to get to the bottom of the chat here. Yeah, and that is a big problem, Sasquatch. I think a lot of us recognize that WVU is in some debt. But, you know, a lot, like, like with the Huggins thing, a lot of people don't know that his, you know, a lot of his salary was paid for was boot by booster money, right? And, and, and the university was actually only paying him about, I think it was three one five somewhere in there, uh, and then the rest was being paid with booster money, or so I've been told by reputable sources. Now, I haven't seen that written down anywhere, and I haven't researched it or fact checked it either, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it was here. So, I think we we got the right guy if the right guy was available. I don't know if May falls in that category, but certainly he would be a guy that would be nil backed. Um, you're going to have to get May into the fours, right? At least. I mean, I don't see Dusty May leaving FAU for a job unless it's short term for any less than $4 million. I just That's just what I've read. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> Listen, John, if we could hire Sean Miller, we would, you know. Um, that's just like, I mean, that's just like saying we should hire <laughs> you know, throw a name out there. I mean, it's just guys like that don't leave jobs like that. You know, that's a top five job. It's tough, man. It's tough. Or are you talking about the? Is he at Dayton now, or did he leave Arizona? I, I might, I'm sorry, that might have just happened. Is is John Miller at Dayton, or is he at Arizona now? I don't know why I'm having this brain fart. Johnson State pays a salary. I, I've been told by a few people that the the boosters pay some of his salary, but I, I'm not. Or Xavier, I said Dayton, didn't I? Apologies. I had a brain fart on that one. Uh, yeah, that's still a, you know, that's that's still another job that I don't see him leaving, man. You know, he I forgot he left Arizona and went there. Um, but uh if it could happen, yeah, that would be a huge splash. Yeah, I mean, that would be who you want. But, I mean, there's a guy that used to coach Xavier, too. Think about what Chris Mack has done and, and 
that's a guy I would be extremely, extremely happy with to have. I mean, you can talk about culture, whatever. He's 11 and 9 in the NCAA tournament. He's had numerous, at least one. I think he probably had more number one overall seeds uh, when he coached at Xavier. And, and to me, that's like, gosh, man, that's, you know, I don't know if he knows about NIL or not, but I know he can coach. Okay, well, I, I'm just uh, – that's just what I was told by um, uh, a couple people that I guess I can't bring up. But it's not a big deal. Like I said, I wasn't trying to claim to be right about it. Uh, it was just – like I said, I didn't fact check it. So uh, I guess I probably should have. <laughs> you think John Beeline, huh? I, I would be uh, – I mean, they played it off really well if uh, John Beeline is the guy. Because here's the reason I think it's not John Beeline. It's because the list is there. There's other guys being named. Uh, we wouldn't have heard anything past John Beeline, really, if, G if Beeline was going to be the guy, in my opinion. Um I wouldn't mind John Beeline to come back. It's just uh, for how long are you talking? Because, like, if you're talking about a one- to two-year stopgap, that's as far as I would go with it, Shannon. Think about this. If he coaches three years, he's 75. You really want to have a 75-year-old coach who Jerome Tang is in this conference. You know, think about the energy level he has. And what he does every day in a day. And then think about a guy like John Beeline. Do you think he matches that? I just think, you know, we're ready for a younger direction. Uh, it, you know, even John Beeline was in his 50s or late 40s whenever he got the job here. Certainly coached it into his 50s. Uh, and then Hugs was the same level and then into his 70s. So, We've had older guys, uh, or middle-aged to older guys. I really would like to see us go up like a Pat Kelsey um, age, like, you know, as far as his age direction. Somebody that's in their early to mid-40s. Will Wade would be preferable. He's freaking 41 years old and, and is, is going to be a star. Doesn't matter where he goes, he's going to be successful. No worry, Sasquatch. I saw your mistype. Yeah, but you you know I, I think Shannon, you can't hire, you can't hire based off of where the coach can end up next. I just I see your point, but there are guys that settle in places all the time. You look at Mark Few at Gonzaga. You look at Miller is probably going to do something like that at Xavier, uh, and even even places like Dusty May at FAU. Uh, he could have easily left for a big time job last year. Did it, it happens? It all depends on if you can make somebody happy and provide them. Listen, West Virginia, we got lucky because before NIL became a priority, we got our facilities together. And so teams that didn't do that beforehand, I don't know if you've checked this out, but athletic departments are not funding these big expenditures into facilities now. It's just not happening. That gives us an edge, you know, and, and we're going to continue to have that edge until something else changes, which you probably will eventually. But West Virginia is a pretty cushy spot, man. You know, playing in the Big 12 is tough, but I don't, you know, it's not going to be such a road trip type job for much longer. I think we're eventually going to get to the point to where we're playing a little closer to the home more often. Ronald says he's heard what I've heard. I, I'll, I'll fact check it just to make sure. I appreciate the support, Ronald. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I was told that by a media member. So, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, 
it, you know, people can be wrong about anything. So, I, like I said, I'll, I'll look, but it's out there that that happened, obviously. I, I don't know. Did I miss your super chat, Jacob? I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, man. It's hard to do this by yourself sometimes. Um, there's Nichols. Yeah, that's a name. But I, I, uh, what you know? That's a tough. That's a tough one for me to swallow, Jacob. I, I like you, man. You're you're great. You're always on the show. Uh, but I always give you my honest answers on things, and that's everybody. Uh, I just think now, do you, personally, do I think Darius Nichols could do well at the job? Yes, I think given the time, he could. But you have to look at this from uh, is it going to happen kind of standpoint with some of these guys. And Nichols' connections to Huggins automatically disqualifies him as a viable candidate. Gordon Gee will not allow any more connections to Bob Huggins. It, it's just not going to happen. That's why Andy Kennedy uh, and, and you can look at other guys too that are connected to Hugs. Uh, they're just not being considered for the job because he's made it very clear he wants basically away from anything to do with Bob Huggins. And they've got some kind of feud going on. It has, you know, they, they, it's why you see like with the resign, the whole Bob Huggins resign part, you know, Bob Huggins said his wife signed it. They're saying that Bob Huggins is saying it, that he's lying about it. Um, and that's really Gordon Gee versus Bob Huggins there. And there's more to it than just that. It's, you know, just generally speaking, uh, Gordon Gee loves guys like like Neil Brown uh, that are extremely buttoned up, great ambassadors for the university, uh, make very few mistakes in the media, if any. And just Bob Huggins is the antithesis of all that. He, he's going to say what he wants, what he wants. He's a little bit of a maverick, a wild card. Uh, he liked the sauce at the time. And Dare Stickles also has that DUI on his record, which really disqualifies him. Just look, there's a guy out there with with baggage that West Virginia could get. Will Wade, who is at Nice right now, doing one of the best turnarounds in college basketball. And this is a guy who brought Ben Simmons to LSU and had that team in the Sweet 16 in his 30s, you know? And, I mean, that's the guy. If I was going to bet on somebody that's going to do well, you know, it's probably going to be that guy. But I appreciate your Darius Nichols comment. Sorry for missing your super chat, though, buddy. I didn't mean to. Absolutely. I feel the same way, Shannon. Uh, yes. I, I just think, I, I just think in a game like this, everything, if it's not, no blood, no foul in a game like this when it's loser goes home. Calling technical, technical, ratty tat. I mean, it's got to be something serious in my opinion. You need to swallow your whistles in a loser goes home type game. Uh, and let the play. Let just let the players play, you know. And that's never really ever happened for us because of hugs, because that will all, usually in the past always led itself to our advantage because we usually had the more physical team. Uh, in this situation, we didn't, but I still believe in that. So yes, I think it should have been waved off. I do. Um, it, whether it was for or against West Virginia, kind of don't matter to me. I just think. At the end of the day, that's what that's how in these games you should officiate. The trust is good, man. I talk to Stephen all the time, who is the well, I you know, I don't I don't want to say all the time, but we do talk frequently. Uh, at least every week. You know, we say something to each other. Um, it's not we're not best buddies or nothing, but I do talk to him a lot and he gives me advice. We spoke on the phone for two hours uh, last week, you know. So he is, and if you don't know who Stephen Ford is, he's the uh, head honcho at 
the Country Roads Trust, and he's a great guy, and and truly he is, and he has a vision for that thing, and they actually get people in all the time that come ask him what they're doing, what their secret is. They've done that well, and I have no doubt that they have some gas in the tank. Uh, they've done things the right way there. Uh, and, I, I, you know, look what football's doing right now. They're getting some of their best NIL scores that they've ever had this year. Uh, score as in coup, as in good player. Gosh, I've got a couple of gnats flying around here, guys. Sorry. the My sink, I keep forgetting to plug my sink up. Uh, and they just fly out of there, man. It's wild. Need to do something about that. Pour something down in it. Yeah, there's another guy. It's really old in the mark, you know, and he's in his 80s. You know, I mean, you hear him. He sounds sharp and, and, and all that. Not, not like, listen, I'm not trying to get political here, but Joe, the guy, Joe, what's his name, Scarborough or whatever his name from CNN, said that Joe Biden was his uh, – his best self right now, his most intellectual and analytical he's ever been. <laughs> well, I think uh, G Gordon Gee is still pretty, pretty, pretty upstairs. He's doing pretty well. And, um, but other than that, man, it's just he can be so controversial. And, and he, I mean, do you really want to do anything into your 80s anyway? Like, you know, and then the fact that he has this feud with Huggins makes things difficult because, there are certain players that have nothing to do with Gordon Gee or that situation that kind of feel uncomfortable about coming back around, you know, at least from my viewpoint. So I, I just, you know, the quicker he can go since Hugs had to go, uh, the better. In my, I, I'm with you on that. <laughs> Chris Collins, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I know uh, people like him, uh, and there are some people who even like Likey over at uh, Penn State, but uh, there are better, bigger names, you know. I Listen, I, I think getting a Power 5 coach is good, but, you know, they at least got to be doing something like Smith is doing over at Washington State, at least winning in a tough spot. That's a tough spot to win over there at Washington State. He said the Edwards foul was a flop. David Vincent said, not sure James would leave, but he's a proven winner. Well, it's like this, man. West Virginia is a better job than Mississippi State. Let's not fool around with that, first of all. But it kind of gets offset by it's easier to win the SEC. The SEC is a great basketball conference. I mean, you've got maybe the best team in the country in the SEC this year in Tennessee. One definitely one of the top five, uh, you know. So it's not like it's a walk in the park. You know, UK can be UK any given year. Uh, Arkansas's got musclemen now, like they've definitely improved, although they didn't play as well as I thought they would this year. Um, but yeah, so it's still not the Big Twelve, <laughs> you know. I mean, think about that. You could go from Kansas to Iowa State to Houston, week after week after week, uh, and, and then and then it's like. That's the top of the conference, you know. But still, this year and this year, that could be three losses for any team not ranked, what, 10th uh, or better, you know. <laughs> so it's, this conference is wild, man, and uh, I'm here for it, though. We're, we're okay. We're going to be all right. I didn't want to bring that up, Eugene, because Mo's my dude, but uh, – or not Mo, but uh, – Jacob Yoho's my dude, you know, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to crap all over it. But yes, you're right. He is having a losing record right after this season and all that stuff, you know. Sasquatch says he thinks Jesse Tech is more about the fact that he confronted the other player after the play than the play that the guy fell over. It could be, but like I said earlier, just swallow your whistles, man. <laughs> at the end of the day. But, at the, you know, and the thing is, three technicals? God dang, man. Like, I mean, they're just like the cherry on top of when you talk about bad luck and just crazy circumstances, 
I said this the other day on the show, in college football history, in the history of the game, find me a more stick-bitten team than the 2023-2024 West Virginia Mountaineers. Find me one. And, and I'm going to put all – I'm going I'm to sit down and think later, and I'm going to put everything together that happened all the way from the initial Huggins comments – and there may have even been something before that, but the initial Huggins comments on the radio all the way to the DUI and the Paris Hilton, the, the situation surrounding, I said Paris Hilton, Taylor Swift concert, uh, you know, just the, the odds that, that that was what was going on the day he came through there and what he was actually doing there. He was supposed to be in Columbus, people say, but he actually had come down for something. But uh, all the way through, the the sudden nine game suspension, the hard issue with the hard issue that a cook a cook had to Jose in Jose out Jose in to all the guys that left to the the wrist the broken wrist by Jesse Edwards to not going to Italy like it's seriously a lot and that's like maybe not even half of it. it it's truly one of the most incredible improbable. Unbelievable snake bitten seasons of all time. It's almost like the guy you gets like West Virginia University got out of the bed, and stubbed their toe the day that Hugs said that on the radio, and decided, you know what, I'm gonna go full demon on this and, and lose my mind. And that's what happened, and it just snowballed. And it still ain't quit. It's almost like how we felt in the off season of was it 2020, 2021 with the portal? When every day I woke up, I dreaded looking at the phone to see who else went in the portal. <laughs> it was, you know, it, it wasn't, but this is worse, you know, as far as to the program. Uh, just wild. Sasquatch said, I completely agree. This has been the toughest year for any team probably ever. And it's like, I'm going to sit down and really write it all down. And the next time we sit down here with you guys, whether it's for um, like a coaches, uh, you know, we talk about who might be the next coach or whatever, whatever the next show is on this channel, I'll sit down and, and put a list together of everything that's happened. And I'll ask a few people that followed us closely and we're going to rattle it all off and just kind of just take it all in in that moment. I'll let Kuz know because he's very like, what we're doing is what we're doing. So I'll have to tell him I told you guys I would do this. But yeah, so it, it's a wild ride we went on with this year at this team, man. A non West Virginia Dodd coach is what we need, regardless if they leave after a winning season or not. We need to get with the times and the rest of the NCAA. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Although, I mean, listen, if Joe Mazzula came knocking, I'm not turning him away. Excuse me. I'm not turning him away because he's got ties to West Virginia. You know, you know, that's like – there's like certain situations where, you know, I, I mean, obviously it's just common sense, but Mazzula, you know, stuff like that. He says, oh, you're okay with Byington, DeVries, or May? I think they can turn things around really fast. Appreciate that, Eugene. Yeah, I don't think you'll hire a data type either. I agree, man. Was that was it Kip Kissinger? I didn't know that. See, I was too busy. I was making a video. I was editing editing a video. Was it really Kip Kissinger tonight? We need to have somebody, an outside source, look at this. Anytime we get Kip Kissinger, uh, that's enough. We need, we need to find out who Kip Kissinger likes and hire that guy because I don't think he's ever going to let this shit go. Like, he literally, find me a Kip Kissinger game with West Virginia that we won lately. Yeah, but that's cultivated, Steven. You know, it's not something you know before the hire. Nobody's going to agree to stay forever. 
based on the hire. You know what I mean? No matter if they're mid-major. If they're coming up to Power 5, that means they've got the potential to go beyond wherever they're at unless it's the creme de la creme, right? Like UCLA, Duke, uh, in UNC, Kentucky, uh, in that vein. Texas, whatever. Um, so I get what you're saying there, and nobody wants to rebuild over 45 years, but what's the what's – the, well, how do you prevent it? Are you saying that we can only ever get West Virginia guys and that's what we kind of have to stick to to prevent this from happening? I don't know about that, man. That's that's really limited scope. That's tunnel vision to me a little bit. I, I think we have to broaden our horizons and, you know, you know – I'm telling you what, man. These nats are getting to me, fellas. Paul, I really am sorry about that. Um, but uh, if he's black, white, I don't care. But it's got to be somebody, you know, that – I mean, four or five years is a while. You know, as long as they leave the program in a better place than they left it, Stephen, that's really all I care about. You know, I mean, do I want them to stay? And Like, listen, if it's somebody that does what – Beeline did leaves again. Yes, of course, I'll be devastated when it happens. And it'll probably take me a couple days to get over it. But uh, I just don't think we can think that way anymore in this day and age of the NIL. Maybe before, but not now. <sighs> John O, man, he said, can anybody prove Pearson was not beyond any of this? We can certainly blame, blame her. I mean, look, South Park episode. Anybody watch South Park with Paris Hilton, the one with Paris Hilton, where uh, she basically decides that Butters is going to be her new pet? And uh, that's a good one. Butters was trying to get away from her the whole time. All she, and all her animals commit suicide over and over and over. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. That's a crazy show. Yeah, that's true. Three within four minutes. The same guy? So you're telling me Kip Kissinger called all three of those? Somebody please tell me yes or no on that. That's insane. I don't know why I'm having trouble keeping up with all these now, fellas, ladies. We can blame Taylor Swift, John says. Absolutely. Yeah, I think Calipari would be a dream hire for us, absolutely. I think he's kind of getting – I don't know about burnout at Kentucky. I mean, he's certainly not going to leave there. If he got fired, would he consider West Virginia? He went to UMass. I mean, you think he might. But he he might get an NBA job if he gets fired. He's like, you know, he's that well respected. So at the end of the day, man, I'm just uh, like you guys all say. I'm just I just want somebody we like. All right, guys. I uh, hate to cut this thing off, but uh, I've been at this for about four or five hours today. I'm ready to kind of hang loose and relax, enjoy the rest of the evening. Uh, What's up, Bobson? Um, my prediction, you know, I, I mean, I've really, really rattled every tree that I've got on this. And um, this is truly one of the only times, like, James Madison leaked the Byington news the other day. It wasn't us. And everybody I've spoken to said, no, it's not Byington. He's 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 definitely a top five candidate, but he wasn't the number one candidate. The people really listen. Somebody was really smart at James Madison, saw the connection, and decided to try to get somebody to make a move. It's all about leverage in this game. But uh, if you're asking for my prediction, I think it's going to be either Devries. May, at this point in time, DeVries, May, or Byington, 
Kurds, one of those guys. Uh, I don't think we're going to get the top top, but I do think we got an outside shot at May. I really do. Uh, like 10%, 20 maybe. Uh, but DeVries is really who I, I think it, it depends, you know, because they, we, you know, Red may watch who does what in the tournament. You want whoever you bring in to be winning when you do it. So maybe whoever gets furthest is the guy. I don't know, but uh, let's give it a couple more days, man, and I'll let you know. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Hoops from the Hills. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and share. Share is very important, uh, as always. So thank you for all you guys do. This has been another episode of Hoops from the Hills. My name is Mountaineer Paul, and I'm out.